This is a novel I'm finishing. This is the beginning. It starts with the sound of my own name spoken aloud. Call me Nicholas, I'm fine. Nick or Nicky, even better. But Nicholas Marsh, all the way through, first and last, I know I've done something I'm going to pay for. Hearing it in French, from the earpiece of a Parisian counter-terrorism officer in a Kevlar vest, his back to me and his binoculars trained on my kitchen window, that's rock bottom. That's how it starts. The GIGN, French Special Forces, no doubt, as I sneak up behind the blonde one hiding under a 17th century arch, I again hear my name from his earpiece. On the side streets and the rooftops, other soldiers, flag suits, assault weapons, gas masks, surrounding my building. Time to leave. Back the way I came, treading lightly toward the canal and the bus, they won't be stopping the bus. It's a mistake, it's gotta be. If I'd done something to deserve counterterrorism, I'd remember, wouldn't I? <laughs> Who do I know at GIGN? Am I thinking of escape? No, at this point I'm getting pissed. Why hasn't somebody warned me? Why haven't they given me a chance to buy my way out? Sure, GIEGN makes it look serious, but I know somebody in every department of government and what they cost. Serious things have been undone before. Beltoise, he's the man to talk to. Second at the Surete, he was at our Christmas party only last night. If I dealt pot or owned a brothel, I'd get a phone call 24 hours in advance of a raid. It's common courtesy. He'll be eating at Dazur, charging it to us as usual. He's between courses when I walk in. Why is GIGN all around my apartment? You don't warn me? Nikki, our past history is why I'll give you a minute's grace before I call you in. His face is cold, not like he doesn't know me, like he's never seen me before. Normal corruption is one thing, he says, but this? Normal corruption? Normal corruption is my specialty. Not to mention it's fit him quite nicely, thank you, all these years. As I look at his face, I realize what a farce it all is. You treat them like princes, but the first time you actually need them to put out, they might as well be an insurance. Faced with this ingratitude, something inside me just gives up. Okay, I tell him, I surrender. I'll confess right now. It's the jet ramps, isn't it? He looks confused. We have this client, a dictator. You know the old joke about you're not really a country unless you have your own stamps, your own airline, and your own beer? Well, he's got some commemorative stamps. He's got a brewery, Mercedes stretch limo, and a portrait of himself as Julius Caesar. But he gets embarrassed when his guests have to descend a staircase off the plane. There's a staircase on Air Force One, I tell him, and he says, they could have a ramp if they wanted one. <laughs> so when the government collapsed in Kumbada, we flew a cargo plane in and liberated a couple of jet ramps. The guy was so happy, he painted two Cessnas and proclaimed it the National Airline. I don't think we hurt anybody. Beltois just stares. That's not it? Silence. Okay, Napoleon's penis. That was a good deed, I swear. Excuse me? It was your Minister of Defense's fault, not the present minister, the old one. He had this thing about Napoleon's penis, that it should be back in France where it belongs. <laughs> it is in France. Napoleon's body is at Les Invalides. The body, sure, but the penis was removed during the autopsy, and it's floated around from collector to collector. It's now owned by, by a urologist, naturally, in Philadelphia. This isn't funny. It's true. Anyway, the Minister of Defense wanted it back, and the urologist price was outrageous. So we found a more generously sized one around the same age for a price he could afford. We made him happy. <laughs> You found him another penis? Another old penis. You think that was easy? How many 300-year-old penises you think are floating around? Beltois stares at me with, I can't tell if it's respect or concern. But the odd thing is, to me, this is beginning to feel pretty righteous. Confession really is good for the soul. Okay, not the answer. Give me a chance. The 18 identical, one-of-a-kind Moroccan emeralds. No. The Van Gogh with the wrong ear missing? Beltois rolls his eyes. We've never met, he says. Except for a few steak dinners with hundreds of other people I've never met either. But my advice is you find a quick way out of France now. This is terrifying. Beltoise is a glorified flatfoot with a fancy office. I'm begging to be arrested and he's not biting. It's unnatural. Throw me a bone here, I say. I don't understand what's happened. He grimaces. You know damn well it's the bomb. The bomb? Of course I know all about the bomb. I'd arrived back in Paris the day before just in time for the funerals. 12 dead, 37 injured, a miracle it wasn't more. The fact that no one's claimed responsibility only heightens the tension. You don't even have the consolation of knowing who to be afraid of. Beltois, however, has made up his mind. It's your shipping certificate, your company's letterhead, your signature on the bloody thing. You think it will cover for that? You're insane. I stand frozen for an endless moment until words I never thought I'd hear myself say come tumbling out of my mouth. I didn't do that. I'm innocent. And then I run. <laughs>